In this video, you'll learn about some of the highlights from the over 50 new features and updates in WebSharp Pro version 3. The first thing you probably notice is that the main panel now includes its own slider to change the percentage sharpening for easy access. I'm going to go with about 150% for this image, but before we process it, let's dive into the settings and take a look at some other new options. Navigate over to the Quick Export tab, which of course is a pro-only feature. And here we have the options for cropping and filling, which are going to come into play here because in this case, I want to export to a one by one square output. And obviously this image is much taller than one by one. Let's just take a quick look at what happened. If we try and sharpen this image, we're going to be forced to crop it. And there's no way that I'm going to get something that I think looks attractive. It's too close to the bottom. It's too close to the top. I really need to keep more of the vertical height of this image, if not all of it. So let's cancel this and instead dive into the settings where we can choose to, instead of crop, we can choose to keep the full image and fill it either with color or with a blur. Let's take a look at the blur option and we see now we have a new option to drop shadow or not. I'm gonna to choose to drop shadow and let's shift click on sharpen to open this as a new image and just take a look at what that's gonna do, where instead of cropping the image, it actually adds pixels to the right and left to give us the overall one by one output and it's doing so by blurring the image to so get a nice harmonious look that matches the image. We also have this drop shadow. And if we just kind of isolate that for a second, the drop shadow is doing this. This would be no drop shadow and with a drop shadow. So it gives it a nice offset from the background, gives it more of a dimensional feel. So I really like that look, but you might want to try a different approach. So let's close this, go back into our settings. And instead we could go and fill with a color. We can choose a particular color like white, or click on it, choose something else like black or red or whatever color we might want to use. I'm gonna cancel that. And instead of using this fixed color, I'm actually gonna to choose to use the auto. Auto means it will analyze the image and choose a color which is harmonious with this particular image. So it would adapt to each output that I create. Let's take a look at this. I'll shift click on sharpen once again. It's going to similarly expand the image, but instead of blurring the image to do so, it just uses a simple solid color and that color was chosen by the panel to match the overall image. And since I've left it open, I can still double click on this color and I could choose different options if I feel like I wanna match it in a different way. I have that ability to play with whatever I might want to use there. Let's close this, dive a little bit further. Going back into our settings, let's choose something a little different. This time, let's go and add a white fill, which will expand the image, and then additionally add a border. And the borders can be set as either a certain number of pixels or as a percentage. And percentage is a nice option because it will adapt to whatever size output you use. So that's what I'm gonna use here. Let's shift click on sharpen and we'll see that the image now is going to be exported in our square aspect ratio, but also with this white border around it, which looks really nice. And we still have the drop shadow because I've left that option on. Let's close this and take a look at one more option, which is I'd like to add a watermark to the bottom of this image. Go back into settings, go over to our watermarks, and I'm gonna apply my watermark to the bottom, and I have some new options down below here. One is, how is it offset? Am I gonna allow it to go over the border, or do I only want it on the image? If I choose this option, it will stay over the image area, but I wanna put it, in this case, over the border. So I'm gonna choose over the final image. And then notice we also have some options for choosing which blend mode gets used, as well as recoloring it. And the recoloring is going to be important in this case. My watermark is white. That's what I've imported, but I can choose a different color. I can make my watermark whatever color I want to be. In this case, I want to make a black watermark that's going to go on my white border down below. Let's shift click on sharpen. We'll take a look at the new output here with our border and our watermark placed at the bottom. So that looks really good. And of course, at this point, I can just click save to save my output and I'm good to go. Let's close this and just take a look at a few more things in the panel here. The templates, if we shift click on crop overlay, you notice that the overlay templates now include the ability to create these borders as well as the blur and other options. So they've been updated to do all the things we've just done here. And then going to the settings, if we navigate over to the general settings here, there's a few new options here. One of the most requested ones is this new option to save to the source folder. So by default, I'll be saving to this generic output folder that I've created. But when I choose save to source folder, when I save the image, it'll go back to the same location as the original parent document. I also have an ability to allow renaming during save so I can change the file name to anything I want while it's being processed. 
And I can use the title for a file name, meaning that if I've set a title in the metadata, either in Photoshop or Lightroom, that will be used as the title. These are just a few of the features in WebShirt Pro 3. Be sure to click on the tutorials button to see more, as well as check out the release notes for all the details of everything that's new. And now click into this next video to learn more.